Welcome to another edition of the Cattle Call here on the Rural Radio Network. I'm Susan Littlefield. Uh, excitement, man, oh man. I think if there'd have been allowed for fireworks on Friday night, we might have actually seen them because of this cattle market. We're going to talk more about this and something I found interesting, a cattle trade that went late into the evening. We'll talk more about that. We'll talk about the technicals and the challenge that's happening within the trade today, along with some interesting things happening within the open interest and a nice numbers increasing on the rally. As always, Brad Coima joins us with Coima Coima and Varlick out of Sioux Center, Iowa. And let's talk about the fact that you know, we knew the Catalan feed report would be coming out. We knew cash would take place after that. But who'd have thought that we would have seen that cash discussions happening with the Packers way after six o'clock at night? I know. It was crazy. Uh, unusual. Um, although it's happened two weeks in a row. Uh, good to see you, Susan. Thanks for having me on. Um, so I was still, uh, talking to my, the guy that sells my cattle who happens to be my brother at about six 30 on Friday night about should we take 185, um, which was two to three or maybe even instances four higher than some of the bids had been, uh, the week or two prior to that. Um, obviously that was a nice sale. We, we did sell quite a few cattle that way. Um, but to wait that long, uh, it, I, I think, I think part of the deal is I think some of these packers that found themselves short bought decided to gamble and hope, well, maybe the, maybe the cattle on feed report will be bearish at two o'clock. Maybe that'll break the will a little bit of the feedlot. Maybe we'll be able to get cattle bought a little less than we thought. Well, the report was neutral um, and I didn't see anything too exciting about it other than you can see that the general migration of cattle on feed are still moving to the north. Uh, and away from, particularly away from Kansas, but to a degree away from Texas also. Um, uh, so, I, you know, when they didn't get any help on the report and, 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 and the feeder said, you know what, I'm current enough here in my part of the world anyway, where I'm going to wait. And then the, then the bids came around. There was a little 185 again today, by the way, uh, and basically an immediate ship deal. Um, I think cash can be better this week. Uh, I think we have a shot to be one to two higher again, both up here and in the South. Um, it's Wednesday, so talk is cheap, but uh, more than likely it'll be a late week trade again, I suppose. So it sounds like we're going to go toe to toe and, and, and see in the end who wins out. And more than likely, it'll be it'll be those uh, cattle producers. Well, let's hope so. Leverage is a leverage is a is a is a is a cool thing when you have it, and uh, it's such a fine line. You know, I've said this so many times with you, but it's such a fine line between not enough and too many. Um, but um, yeah, it feels to me like, especially in the north, you know, I don't know if you're going to going to talk about the weights, you know, the girl in the room or not, but, you know, the weights are not good uh, and the weights are big, big largely uh, influenced by Texas and Kansas. Not so much in Iowa. In fact, the average, we're, we're very average. Uh, we look at that data hard every Tuesday morning when it comes out. But so it appears as though, you know, maybe the more uh, vertically integrated feeder, um, uh, the packer is, is asking for more days and more weight. That is a way to create supply, obviously. Um, but in the north here where we do still do the negotiation, we've still got a little leverage, obviously. So how since we're talking about this gorilla, I'll grab the bunch of bananas. And, and how big can these cattle get in the south before it becomes too big for those packers? Well, I don't know what well, right now uh, that I don't think that's a problem because they're so starved for supply. Uh, right. But t steers in, 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 in Kansas carcasses averaging almost a thousand pounds. Wow. I mean, this is crazy. Um, some of it's genetics, I would suppose. You know, you, you know, the, we've talked for about what, how many now, two years, three years in earnest about this dairy cross, the business getting started so big. Um I tell you what, the, 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 those cattle are going to get a lot bigger than this Mexican crossbred the 1260 pounds steer that they used to feed so some of it's that but at the end of the day it's still meat and it's still meat that has to get consumed and, and, at, a, and at a price so i, I don't want to paint brush that this isn't a big deal i clearly it, it's important um and it'd be even more important if we lose uh, that current status like we have now in the north if we start backing up but i'm i'm kind of encouraged more than kind of i'm really encouraged by the strength in the cash as we come out of this calf crop and into the yearling run um, you know, there's some high priced yearlings out there and, 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 and it'd be nice if we can get those marketed on time so we can stay current going through that period as well. What do you see for technical challenges within this trade? Well, we're <clears throat> $12 up in a very short fashion in the December kill. Um, and so, you know, there, there, there are 
there are certain momentum indicators. I personally like the stochastics the best for cattle anyway, um, but they're higher than the drafts dentist here. The stochastics are well above 90%. And anytime you get above 80, you start to, that's their, that's your yellow blinking light to be careful. Um, now markets can stay overbought for a while, particularly hogs or oversold. Um, but you know, it, it's not natural for the market to move that quickly in that short amount of time. So, it's the market is a market of action and reaction, which means usually bull markets are somewhat forgiving. You get a rally, you get a correction, you get another rally, you get another correct. Okay. You know, I mean, that's, it's like a stairway, not, not like a skyscraper. Um, so could we have a little bit of a correction here? Sure. Um, the one thing that I would uh, note that I think is important technically means that the topic we're on 183.50. Um, some of the guys that I talked to in the, the fund community, if you want to call them that, um, you know, were telling me like, well, the funds probably aren't going to really start to get involved until 183.50. Well, I'm not going to kid you. When we were sitting there 173 and 174, I'm like, seriously, we got to get all the way to 183.50 to get you bulled up. Um, but look at yesterday's action. When we took out that 183.50 for real, open interest of up over 7,000 contracts. So, I mean, these guys came after it. They've got a lot of dry powder, okay? They got a lot of bullets because this open interest is not very big even now here at, at all. That excites me. That encourages me. That doesn't mean you can't have a couple dollar correction just because we're so overbought. But the technical picture of this thing is getting a lot better, um, in my opinion. Now, I should, there are hedgers out there. I'm one, too. I mean, I'm more than a speculative right. trader. I do feed cattle and I do hedge, believe it or not, once in a while. <laughs> I, I just want to. I just want to highlight a little bit the summer cattle, most particularly June cattle. Okay, we're we're, we're at 180 yesterday. Now, think about basis. The last several years, the last couple in particular, and for instance, like last year, you remember the basis, guys? Eight, ten over, sometimes more than that, twelve. So what I'm trying to say is a 180 June. If the basis is like last year, that could be like a 190 May cash cattle you tell me i mean is that is that a terrible place you know uh to start selling a few cattle i guess i think not um yeah you know, i'm friendly i like the market i think we're going into tighter numbers as we get to the end of the fourth quarter but uh, there's always something that can go wrong as we've been proven over and over and over you and i haven't talked about this in a couple of weeks and that's heifer retention um i've talked to a few young cattlemen out there that are saying hey we're going to hold back all the heifers we get this fall um, to start rebuilding what we have. But then when you look at the markets and the discussions out there, they say that there isn't. And of course, how do we know without a July report? But what are you hearing out there? And is the potential there to start seeing a pickup? Well, that's a, it's a great question. And it is the question in terms of, you know, what we should be looking at analytically long-term in the marketplace. Um, we will get a little bit of a glimpse on the next cattle and feed report because the quarterly report reports, uh, so the October one, remember last year's quarterly October report was a real nightmare. That great big placement number, remember it? I, I'll show you my scar, okay? Um, the, the That one will give you a breakdown of steers and heifers that are getting placed. So that we should be able to extrapolate a little out of that one. The December one will help us with that too. Um, unfortunately, like you said, we did not get the, the semi-annual inventory report at the end of July, so we have to wait till the end of January. Um, but to try to answer your question, and I asked this question to a lot of cattle people, the ones that I think that, you know, would have a, a, an educated response anyway. Um, and, and it's it's very regional. There, there still is the main driver of when I ask those questions, a lot of guys, they say, Brad, it's economics. Uh, I can't afford not to sell these heifers for what they're bringing. My banker tells me I got to retire some debt. I'm 77 years old. Uh, I'm not, but I mean, that's what people are saying. This is my way out. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to start a bunch of first calf heifers. And in fact, I'm selling cows, but cow today, uh, cow slaughter year to date is down a lot from last year and the year before. So either you got to, I mean, if you're going to be a cowboy, you got to have cows. Uh, and so to me, there's that area across the north that I'm most familiar with, Dakotas, the Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, that area. I think there's going to be half for retention. I think it's already started. Now, you go to, because the, they've had enough grass and enough rain for the most part. Um, now, if you go like the southeast, the Virginia, Kentucky, that sort of thing, where there's a lot of cattle down there, they have not had great weather. And I think they probably aren't. Um, so 
I guess that's okay. Let's start this rebuild pace slowly. It'll make, keep these numbers a little tighter, a little longer than what we thought they might have otherwise. Um, but uh, yeah, all eyes on uh, the October report and then certainly that January report ought to really be interesting. All right. Well, I always appreciate the time that you take to talk to with us. What's the best way for folks to get a hold of you guys? Of course, I enjoy it, Michelle. Um, 712-722-0023 is the phone number. But uh, if you look us up at kkvtrading.com, you can find out all of us. All right. That has been another edition of The Cattle Call. A quick reminder, commodity futures and options do involve a substantial risk of loss, not suitable to all investors. And that's The Cattle Call right here on the World Radio Network. <laughs>